Hi everyone, I'm Susan Birch and welcome to another episode of the Health Detective Podcast. And today I am talking with Valerie Evans. Valerie is an educational psychologist, um, behavioral analyst, very interesting lady to talk to about all our behavioral patterns and why we do things and how we can change uh, change those patterns for the better when we want to. And Valerie has developed an app called No Way, and the way is W-E-I-G-H. And this is an alternative to some of the other sort of dietary apps that are out there on the market. So I'm quite excited to talk to her today. So thanks for coming on, Valerie. Oh, thank you, Susan. I'm excited to talk to you too. Yeah. Uh, Would you, well, well, like you said, I'm telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I'm a um, behavior analyst, which is a specialized psychologist, uh, like you mentioned, and we're very interested in understanding learning and patterns of responding. And we look at patterns of responding and um, any variables that are associated with those contextual variables, internal variables that motivate us, um, anything going on that is paired with our patterns of responding. And with that information, we're able to pursue change in the direction that we're looking to pursue. So it's a, um, it's a point of view, behavior analysis is a point of view that is readily applied to the um, patterns in our daily life. And um, as a behavior analyst, um, I recognize um, some, some ways in which problems of everyday life might be better addressed if there was more behavior analysis involved. And that's when I got um, involved with the app and the um, the weight loss market where people are really interested in making this change. But many times what happens, especially with weight loss, is this isn't their first go around. And they have these um, experiences trying to follow restriction diets that um, don't really ever work out the way they want them to, or they do for the short term. And um, I I recognized how um, behavior analysis could really support those efforts. And um, that's my story and how I came about to um, developing this app. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And, you know, I see this a lot in my own clients, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to the podcast will um, be familiar with that feeling of you get excited and motivated to make a change. We probably want to be healthier, but we associate that with losing weight. I don't know, actually, whether that is whether it is really about health or whether it's really more about losing weight and the external appearance, you probably have more. You can probably give us some insights on that. But anyway, as you say, they go through a diet. So there's so many options out there and they might do some sort of boot camp or, you know, something to get them started, have success. But of course, in daily life, things always come up. And it's not always possible to get everything exactly right all the time. And then if we make a mistake, then there's that tendency to go, that's it, it's all done, I'm a failure, I can't do this, and just go back to what we were doing before, instead of just picking up and carrying on. And then Mm -hmm. that cycle then gets into our psyche as whenever you go to make these changes, then you go, oh, I knew I, I knew I wouldn't be successful. I knew I couldn't do this. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of what you see happening there? Do you have any underlying insights into that process? Yeah, I think about that a lot. And um, one of the things that is that I would argue is true of diet programs is that they they are kind of overlaid on your life rather than being more of an integrated approach. And this requires the diet program to present some rules for the users to follow. So 
I, I call it an accounting approach to a behavioral problem. You you have a you have this extra weight or this dissatisfaction with your life, whatever it is that's motivating you to consider beginning a weight loss program. But then what the programs largely give you in return is just some rules to follow. Um, whatever those rules are, you know, if it's, if it's time of day, if it's avoiding certain food groups, many times it's tracking everything you eat, writing that into your phone, budgeting, you know, if you have something coming up that you expect to um, consume more budgeting for that. And you all together, it uh, creates this big load and your mental health is what suffers because it's we don't have the capacity for that type of restriction and putting all our attention on this one thing that we want i would challenge people who are either you know find themselves if they can honestly look back and say you know what i have pursued weight loss many times or um this is something that i have in the back of my head you know after you know, after the holidays, I'm going to take care of this or next summer, I want to look differently or, um, you know, I have something coming up that I want to feel differently for. I want to challenge those, those people who are listening and and can relate to that experience to consider their own, their, their life in a larger perspective to kind of zoom out and look at their life as a whole person. And maybe maybe focusing on losing weight is easy or it's easily measurable and that we can say something like if I lose five pounds or if I fit into this dress or these jeans or you know if I'm thinner than this person you know or if I can be what I was then then my life will feel like it's in control and I can feel happy again. And that is the burden. I'm going to sum up all the burdens of my daily life into this one thing and focus all my attention and effort there. That's a tendency we have as people. We we become overwhelmed with a feeling and we want to direct it towards something that we feel that we can make some progress toward. I, I like to sum it up with this question. If you were given the choice of two wishes, one is to reach your goal weight and the other is to feel happy in your life, which one would you choose? And would achieving your goal weight also make you happy? And would being happy also make you your goal weight? And just kind of do that mental exercise and reflect on how, what is really motivating you wanting this change and what is the real solution from there? I like that. And I really like those questions. And, you know, that's really about getting down into the deep why of why you want to do this rather than that surface level of, you know, I have a lot of people who say, well, my life would be better when I don't weigh as much. And, When you delve into, you know, how will that be better? Will your husband love you more? Will your wife love you more? Will your children love you more? And none of that's going to change regardless of what you weigh. Um, It's really Mm -hmm. about the weight on the scale reflects how much you love yourself is really really the question, you know, and we keep trying to love ourselves more by, by reducing that weight on the scale, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we invest everything in that number. And, and well, I, you know, I can, this, this project was personally inspired and I feel like I really understand that experience and everyone's experience is different, but having um, a feeling like a lack of control and looking for that and using something like a weight loss goal to, to get you there um, is ultimately going to be a short-term fix. Mm. Uh, al- alternative, and then the reason it's a short-term fix, I would argue as well, is because it's it's motivated 
by escape. Behavior analysts look at motivation to in, as two different categories. One is that you're pursuing something. You know, there's some pleasure or joy or some something practical that you want or need. And then there's the motivation to escape or avoid. And we we all experience both of these and both of these types of motivation influence our daily lives on a regular basis. But what is the primary one in your life? Think about that like Friday feeling. You know, not everyone has a typical work week, but if you, you know, whatever, however it would apply to your daily life, but that that Friday feeling for someone who might be working Monday through Friday, what is that Friday feeling? Is it looking forward to something, even if that something is being at home, you know, making soup, <laughs> spending time with your loved ones? Is that, are you, are you looking forward to the joy that's coming or on, is that Friday feeling for you relief? Do you feel like a burden has been temporarily lifted for you? And that's kind of a, a good barometer for you know, where you're headed, the path you're on. And if you want to feel better about your life and, and experience a feeling of authenticity that you're living your true life and that you can feel confident in the decisions that you're making and that you can feel confident in following the path that that you're, um, that's naturally unfolding in front of you with these decisions toward wellness and your mental health then that's 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 a, a motivation to pursue but if when we're motivated to escape it's it's always a temporary reinforcer because we always that aversive is never going to go away and um it, that's an indication that there's some real change that is needed to get out from under that rock to feel like you have control of your life and to feel like those things that you want for yourself are accessible. Mm -hmm. And if you can look at it a different way and pursue it a different way, then um, then it all just becomes much easier. I think that's really interesting and quite thought provoking, really. If I think about, you know, many of my clients come to see me because they are suffering from the symptoms of, you know, a poor diet, um, a poor a, a poor lifestyle and so now this is escalating into you know symptoms and so so weight weight gain is just one of many different symptoms of of that lifestyle so i think it's interesting do they want, i think that's a really good question do they want to make change because they're trying to escape from those symptoms or do they want to make change because they want to pursue a way of feeling with, mm -hmm. you know, no brain fog, with the pain gone, you know, and, and it might seem like mm -hmm. both sound like the same thing, but they, they aren't actually. There's quite a subtle difference between the two um, thought processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that difference becomes more pronounced when you encounter a situation situation like you described earlier, where you are suffering a setback or you have a bad day or there's another stressor in your life that's making any kind of effort you're applying here a little less effective. Um, how discouraged are you by that situation? And when we're motivated to escape, then the helplessness and hopelessness is is very near. And that's what we go to. But when we're motivated to pursue, it's easier to take more of a problem solving approach. Mm -hmm. That's what is going on. How can we describe it without including a lot of emotion? How can we recognize how we feel without, I, I like to say, you can't understand a bad mood using a bad mood. <laughs> that if you're if you're really in a bad mood <laughs> and you're trying to get out of it, you can't use your bad mood to do that. You have to be able to look at the situation as an objective observer 
and see the variables at play, accept the barriers that you see, accept the situation, and decide how you want to move forward. So um, setbacks from that point of view are just information. They're just opportunities to learn and opportunities to better refine your path and, and give you more information about where you're going and where to put your attention. But when we're motivated to escape, any stressor can be very discouraging and difficult to overcome. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And and that is what that nuanced difference is between the escape. You know, so I, I've had a challenge and I haven't been able to meet those expectations I had of myself. So now I'm a failure, you know, um, and, and this is even if you're trying to like get rid of headaches or reverse your type 2 diabetes or whatever it may be, or, okay, well, you know, what do I, what do I do next time? Like, you know, you've got the next meal, mm-hmm. like just put, put whatever's happened behind. You've just focus on the next meal and how can that, how can I find a way of thinking about that as enhancing my life and enhancing my energy and enhancing how I feel and I can stop taking yeah. these pills every morning and yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah. And yeah. I'm, it's just a that. point of view. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to encourage that that mind shift. And, and that's really helpful for me too in terms of talking to people, you know, so instead of trying to escape it, we're moving towards something that is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that requires a lot of patience, a lot of patience. You know, when you mentioned the gym, unless you're, unless you're currently involved in a gym routine, or I, I think even people who are, there's always some type of guilt or something missing. Like, um, like I love to swim. That's my exercise. And I, I do it because I really enjoy it. But I also have other things that I would like to do at the gym that I don't do. Like I don't, you know, visit the weight room or I, I also enjoy going on the um the treadmill and I haven't done that in a while. And there's all of this, it, it feels like such a big task, just approaching a fitness routine you know, whether you're you're starting from scratch or even I think everyone sort of feels this way to some degree um, about not having a complete fitness profile um, at the gym. And um, that can feel very overwhelming. So allowing yourself to be patient and just using, recognizing your emotion. I feel impatient. I feel like I failed before I started. I feel like I can't do this. I feel like this isn't me. I'm not a fit person. I don't I don't know how to think about myself. If if I was fit, I it's not going to I won't be able to readily identify with that or the other people at the gym. And there's just a whole list of things that we can think about and and mull over and practice and rehearse and and come to believe about the situation. And that's where patience comes in. You know, having patience with ourselves, giving ourselves some runway that I'm going to try this. I don't and and also recognizing that your starting point and your you don't even know what your ending point is but where you think you're going to end up that is not a straight line and you can't anticipate what that path is going to look like until you begin down it <laughs> and it will it'll twist and turn for you and it'll it'll you have to, if you can recognize how it's making you feel if you can problem solve when barriers are encountered then your path will reveal itself and will be unique to you but it's something that a professional can't tell you about that no one could tell you about because you need to begin the experience and take a step forward Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be open to the information that's before you be able to recognize what's important and allow it to influence your decision making and also energize you and motivate you. Mm, really good points. So I think about my own exercise path for the last 45 years and 
you know, the only one constant was that I've exercised, um, how I've done it, what I've done, it, it, you know, and I mean, with my background, it's been a mixture of exercise, but, you know, my approach has changed significantly over the years, different phases of my life, different time constraints. Now that I'm getting older, focusing on different things. Um, so it's been an evolving journey, a really good journey, an interesting journey. Um, but I didn't start off with, I'm just going, I'm going, this is my program and I'm going to do this for the next 45 years. I just started off mm -hmm. well exploring it really <laughs> and learning about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as someone who with such a long history of exercise, who has successfully uh, maintained an exercise routine for so long, can you share what that motivation is like for you? What, what keeps you going? How does it come to feel like such a natural part of your life? I don't like it. So I'll put that out there. So I'm not, okay. I, 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 pre I would prefer not to exercise. My rest days are like, yeah, to exercise today. So that, okay. I think right. that's interesting. So I have had that mental um, barrier to deal with, you know, mm -hmm. every day. And I think, I mean, sometimes people have asked me, you know, at different stages of my life, what are you training for? And for me, you might be able to come up with a, a better way of explaining it. But for me, I just go for self-discipline. <laughs> I'm training myself to do something hard that I don't want to do. And well, then you can you recognize that's that. more important. That's and more important you, than you, exercise. Yeah. Well, then have you looking back, I'm just curious now, because this is so interesting um, that you've maintained ex exercise for so long, but say that to this day, you, you don't find it enjoyable, um, but you recognize that it's given you self-discipline. Were you, do you feel like that self-discipline is something that you were able to use? Was that a, a generalizable skill that you were able to apply it to other areas of your life? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because when something gets hard or I don't feel like doing something, I have that experience of having gone into the gym, having lifted my weights, having done whatever it is I'm going to do. And that is a real solid rock to apply to other things. And it also helps me know that you're not going to do it all in one day. And it's not like... It's not getting it all done. It's like a process and it's and it's a journey. So I think it's been helpful in that respect. The other way, the other thing, you know, I say I don't like the actual training, but I like the feeling afterwards. I could very easily get, you know, mm -hmm. kind of go down into sort of like deep, dark spirals. And um, it's been really, really important for my mental health. So I've recognized that and I like the feeling afterwards and I like the feeling that I can go, you know, like now I can go and play with my grandkids or climb a tree or or do something and, you know, still feel capable of doing it as opposed to mm -hmm. thinking, oh, you know, I wish I could do that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I think there are those other aspects Plus, I have a story. So my story about myself is that I'm strong. And so that is like I'm physically strong as well. And so maintaining that is living up to that story that I have created and told myself over okay. and, over and over again. Yeah. That's you, you're leveraging so much. And that last one, I, I think I love the best because it really ties into this feeling of authenticity. You know, this is, yeah. I know who I am and I want to continue to be that person. 
And, and also, um, the way you feel after you work out is, um, is so great too, because it's such a unique feeling. You can't buy that feeling. There's nothing you can do to create it except work out. Yeah. And even if, you know, even if like, um, it, I think it takes as little as noticing it yeah. that, okay, no one really wants to feel tired and sore. But if you work out and you can reflect on that special way that you feel physically afterwards and you notice it, it will become a natural reinforcer because it's earned. You know, it's like your your gold star when after you studied for the test and that that will keep you, you know, that's that's enough to keep people going. And And then, you know, skipping a day of exercise and wanting that feeling. Yeah, and then not, you know, like skipping a day. I mean, things happen and I structure, I structure rest weeks and I structure, you know, I structure going and doing something else and, you know, um, because you can't just, yeah, it's not just consistently making gains all the time. Sometimes it's about maintenance. Sometimes it's like, well, I've, develop the strength these skills in the gym I want to take that out to going tramping for a few days in the forest or I want to take that out to paddling my kayak down the river or riding my mountain bike or you know like I said you know I love playing you know spending time and playing with my grandkids so yeah so it so it kind of has that has that purpose and it's not like it's not like oh you can never ever miss a day you know and it's the same with your food it's not like Mm -hmm. you you can't sort of you know enjoy a celebration at Christmas or at a birthday at a birthday and maybe Mm -hmm. have a few too many drinks and an extra piece of cake that you you know that wasn't wasn't the purpose to do you've you know you've got to enjoy it and embrace it Mm -hmm. um and know and and you've got to have that confidence in yourself that you know that you're going to yes pack it up it just goes back to being life the next day I just wanted Mm -hmm. to say one more thing about that and that's celebrating and that is something I have always done and it's kind of you know probably sounds silly and embarrassing to to say this but I celebrate my workouts and particularly when I haven't really wanted to work out and some workouts are easier sometimes it's easier than other times and sometimes you're like Mm -hmm. I just don't want to finish this and so I talk I coach myself through it come on three more reps to go you know you can do this and at the end I celebrate and like high five you know like you got this in my you know I write them down in my little exercise book and I'm like wahoo I did it that was hard I did it and I write that Mm -hmm. I actually write that down I tell myself that that was hard but I did it way to go that's wonderful yeah and I love this idea that you're documenting your workouts, not because you want to be rigid and count how many you did this week compared to last week, rather you're documenting them because you value them Yeah, and yeah. you're putting them all together in a book. It's a book of accomplishment and it has meaning to you. Yeah. And also it's also there's different you know I try different I mean you know I've got a background in exercise physiology so I try different and I and and I love understanding about exercise and and exercise can get really monotonous so I try different things I try different approaches and I experiment with different ways of putting workouts together so documenting them I can go like that's a really good one I like that you know and if I'm helping other people with their workouts well then you know, I have this record of like, yeah, well, you know, I did this and that felt really good. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's useful from that perspective as well. Mm. So you're an analyst about exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I like how you do it first before you ask anybody else to do it. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Yes. Yeah. No, and that's good. We're talking about the, um, the generalized um making making exercise something that's generalized and part of your life and um one of the things that we use a lot in behavior analysis are strategies for 
initiating and maintaining motivation. And one of those is called behavioral momentum. And that's when you do something small. It doesn't even have to be related to that big thing that you're trying to do. It can just be um, something that you'll notice and something that you'll value. Like, um, you know, if you don't make your bed in the morning, make your bed. Or if you um, have an extra moment moment in the bathroom, you know, wipe down the sink, wipe down the handles, straighten up the counter. Um, these are all going to be cleaning examples because <laughs> that's my, that's the thing that I do when I want to, um, it's the thing I struggle with, maintaining my house and making it consistently neat and comfortable. But anything that you can do, like if you have, um, well, I'm thinking back to grad school and, and trying to finish and trying to write my dissertation and just feeling like it was this huge wall that I couldn't even begin to climb, that it was a goal that I didn't know how to approach and keep myself engaged with. And I just felt like I couldn't do it. And uh, what I ended up doing, which is effective, is putting my efforts towards things that I, I could do. You know, I have, um, I really like to play the drums just for fun. I was never any good at it, but I just really enjoy it. And um, I started doing that again and just working on it a little bit here and there, not having really any goals about it, but enjoying it and watching myself build something. And it I wasn't building my dissertation. It had nothing to do with graduation, but it gave me extra motivation that I could apply toward that goal that was feeling so difficult. The feeling of control, the feeling that you can be effective, that you're able to do things. And um, and then on a smaller scale, I like to think of it like a gift for tomorrow you. Doing something for tomorrow you, like packing your bag the, you know, the night before or, um, um, you know, buying your favorite cereal that you can enjoy in the morning or whatever it is that you'll wake up tomorrow. You'll forget that you did it until you encounter it. And you'll say, oh, yesterday I believed in me. <laughs> and, and that just, that gives me something. And it's, it's behavioral science. Like it's a real thing. And if, if something seems very difficult and you're having trouble getting started, put your attention towards something that's a little bit easier and something that you do enjoy and are naturally attracted to. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you have, you have extra motivation that you could apply toward that more difficult task. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about, you know, the tiny habits? So what do you think about the things like, you know, if you want to say you want to drink more water that you um, say, well, when I put the kettle on to make my cup of coffee, I'm going to have a glass of water or maybe with exercise, it might just be that you come in and you put your exercise shoes on and you don't necessarily go and do anything, but you just put them on or maybe you walk out to the letterbox and back or something like that. It, What's your thoughts about that kind of approach? Um, well, that's called chaining. And that's that's allowing you the opportunity to pair the cue with the first step of the desired response. Even though you're not engaging in the whole workout, you're taking whatever that cue is, like I just got done with work or the time of day or whatever it is, and you're, you're pairing it with that response, putting on your shoes. And, um, and then that's giving you an opportunity to grow that into something bigger. So that's, that's called chaining. That's, you know, that's a, a behavioral approach for sure. Um, I like to look at in, in this context, I like to, I, I like your idea, first of all, of the putting the kettle on and drinking a glass of water because the drinking the glass of water is really the response that you're looking to do. You want to drink more water. It just makes you feel better. You know, you're going to be more awake. You're just going to be a better person if you keep yourself hydrated, you know, and healthier. So that's a good example of finding spots in your day to do that. Um, and then you can use cues to 
to kind of manipulate your own responses and make some responses easier and some responses harder. Like um, one thing, one strategy that no way users use is to clean their teeth when they're done eating. And it provides a cue that it, it provides an end to the meal. And then it also provides you that constant cue of the cleanness in your mouth, the, the minty, desirable way your mouth feels and wanting to keep it that way. So um, in that way, you're leveraging the concept of cues to um, to make it less likely that you'll do that thing that you are trying not to do. Mm. But um, yeah, certainly chaining and um, starting small and making something bigger is is definitely a strategy that can be very useful. However, it's it's a part of the picture. It's not the whole picture because you're not really looking at the entire context. There might be things like barriers, you know, maybe when you go to the gym, you're doing the wrong exercises and you're hurting your joints and mm -hmm. that doesn't feel good. You don't have a good after gym feeling. You have a bad one mm -hmm. and um, that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And it's not a motivation. It's not that you're lazy or don't know how to do it. It's that, you know, what you're doing needs to be modified or with, um, I was talking to somebody about this recently, like, like flossing, you know, sometimes that's a, a, a desirable adult habit that sometimes we don't acquire during childhood. And we're kind of left with this, how do I start flossing problem as an adult or any other, um, you know, desirable hygiene routine. And for me, you know, I could start a tiny habit and say, okay, well, I just brushed. So that's my cue to pull out the floss and I'm going to floss one tooth and then I'm going to throw it away. And then maybe in a week I'll floss two teeth and then I'll just keep gradually going up from there. But it doesn't really get at what is aversive about flossing to me? Why am I not doing it? It doesn't get to the how, you know, how is this not integrating correctly into my routine? And for me, the flossing, I felt like flossing was, was very gross. I didn't like touching it. It just, um, I, I just didn't like the way it felt. So once I knew that, then I was able to change my technique and do it a different little differently. And it didn't, you know, it wasn't a matter of one tooth versus all the teeth. That wasn't the problem. The problem was, um, recognizing the barrier that made this response more difficult for me and then providing that opportunity to make it easier. Mm. And I find with flossing, you know, um, my teeth, uh, you know, the way, the way my teeth are made and the way my teeth are, the floss will break off or so I actually have quite physical difficulty getting the floss in or it'll get stuck. Um, and the dentist has been good when when she's needed to do any work and made the teeth, you know, made like wider gaps and things for me. But you know, it, it puts you off wanting to do it. You, you, you know, you don't mm -hmm. you don't feel like doing it. So yeah, so there are like you say, lots of other barriers that that can come up that you need to find a way around. Yeah, yeah, understanding because just just taking a tiny like the. You're referring to the book, Tiny Habits. And taking yeah, kind of yeah. Like and, 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 approach. and James Clear's, you know, Atomic Habits habits as well. Is, uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, that's that's looking at the topography of the response and, and trying to like build it up to where you want it to be. But the other part is the, the functional approach and understanding the adaptive nature of our habits and you know, whether you're trying to build one or you're trying to weaken a habit, understanding how it fits into your life, how it, how it fulfills some need for you and, um, and how changing it will kind of create a void that you'll, you'll still need to, um, fulfill that need. I was talking to someone about, um, he was talking about going to bed earlier as like a desirable habit. And, you know, as adults, 
that that's something many people like because you can go to bed earlier that means you can wake up earlier you can be more productive for many of us the mornings are the times when we can get a lot done and you know why can't I just do this why can't I just put myself to bed earlier but the thing you want to think about is how are you using your time in the evening what will you no longer have when you're going to bed earlier maybe that is time for you to watch something that you find inspiring or it's time for you to connect with a loved one whatever it is it it serves some purpose and you need to as much as possible recognize what that purpose is so you have the opportunity to to fill that need using a different response Mm. Mm. yeah that that's quite interesting I was trying to think what I had a thought came up when you were talking about that and I'm assuming that you know I'm assuming there are other people who are who are similar to me in this way and that you know I don't like being told what to do and I don't like telling myself I I don't like telling myself what to do either. So I like to leave things really quite flexible. I don't have rigid times that I have to be at the gym at this time or I have to do my workout at this time. I have to leave that, I have to leave that really flexible. Um, and it's the same, you know, if I tell myself, okay, you're going to be in bed by 10 o'clock, I know that. I'll be sitting there watching some useless rubbish on TV at midnight just because I have this innate rebellion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so I have to work, work my way around that. And I just wonder how many other people, <laughs> whether, whether that's a common thing you come across, but you have this internal yeah. resistance to doing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's natural. We hate following rules or it's hard to find the middle ground because the thing that keeps coming up in our conversation is flexibility and how flexibility is necessary if you're going to follow rules, that if you want to live a healthy lifestyle, you need to be part of that is being able to demonstrate that you can deviate from that and then come back to it. Yeah. Because otherwise you have something that's very rigid and yeah. readily derails and um, can be, you know, extremely discouraging when it does. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I do know people who like to schedule things and also, you know, I mean, I'm fortunate now where I have more flexibility. It was a lot harder when I had four children and you're studying and you've got a business and, you know, then, then you are more tied to schedules. But even then, trying to build some choice into the day always made it mm -hmm. always made it easier, you know. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What behavior analysts talk about a lot is engagement, and how engaged are you with your day? If you made yourself a to do list that you're going to do today and tomorrow and every day for the rest of your life, and that's your honest expectation then um, you're going to readily become disengaged with your daily life because that's boring. And um, the way we create more engagement is with choice making, like you said, and having options, becoming invested in what we're doing emotionally. And I like to think of, um, I thought of this analogy and I'd like to hear what you think. I like to think of like um, visualizing our resources can be very powerful and thinking about our day and our capacity to do things um, and flexibility goes with this too, like a, um, like a bucket of quarters when you walk into an arcade and you have all these options before you. And you could do anything, but you can't do everything because yeah. at some point you're going to run out. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you're trying to do everything, then you have to think about the assumption you're making here that maxing yourself out and giving no regard to your mental health, not being flexible enough to 
respond to the way you're feeling or the way your week is going or your day is going. Um, you know, how, how can you be happy when you corner yourself like that and don't make room, don't set boundaries for what is good for you and where you can pursue your joy and then pursue your goals all at the same time, you know, in harmony rather than the, the willpower mentality and forcing yourself and, and, um, and kind of beginning with this, I don't want to be a failure anymore mentality. Rather yeah, than do, you think that, do you think that's something. where it comes from? Is that the need, is, is there a need for control? I mean, I guess there's so many different personality types that people respond differently. I mean, I have a really good friend who is just a list person. And if it's on her list, she does it. And she's just so motivated to get her list finished I can't stand lists like give me a list and I'll go and do anything except what's on the list (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah I would say that's an individual difference yeah I'm I'm a list person but um but then I can tell the next day when I look at my list what kind of mood I was when I I was then when I made it it. because it's just like an unreasonable list that goes weeks out and into the next month it's like okay I wasn't really thinking clearly and I was probably not feeling good either when I made this list but then on the uh, the happy can do days then I can put lots of things that I'll be able to check off and and have more of a feeling of engagement with my day and not that I'm that the list is part of me you know it's not me telling me what I need to do it's it's making sure I fit in everything that I want to do I've got another friend who when she's done something she writes it on her list so she can tick it off because she feels really good I do that too (laughs) which is another way of just celebrating isn't it that's where I'm celebrating yeah yeah, I I love that concept of celebrating that's very mm. valuable. It just it adds value, yeah, to whatever yeah. it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's and it's personal, so it's not it's not expect it's not looking at the outside world to hold you up for what you've done. It's a personal mm. thing that I did this. This was hard, and I did this, and that there's an element of satisfaction and personal growth every time you do that and it doesn't matter what what it is you're doing but and maybe people yeah it's you know celebrate going to work celebrate getting through an appointment with a difficult client celebrate finishing a hard report or something or you know Mm -hmm. um yeah Great. Anyway, we've got off the topic of food a little bit, but it's a fascinating oh, yeah. conversation. <laughs> I really enjoy talking to you. It's, it's a really interesting. You too. <laughs> um, so let's come back to No Way, because I'd like to talk about your app a little bit. So I'd like you to explain what your app does, how it gets away from, you know, that that calorie counting food logging like rigid control and how it brings in incorporates a lot of what we've just been talking about about life about flexibility celebration listening to our emotions Mm -hmm. yeah it's um I always want to kind of describe it conceptually but then it's like okay but then what what is it (laughs) but um that's where we began with this you know these understanding of um of how our lives work how our daily lives work and how we can be a whole person and pursue things as a whole person um, rather than trying to segment ourselves uh so no way the goal conceptually is to to gain connection with your goals with who you are with feeling more like you and becoming better at attending to the natural rewards that you get in your day based on the choices you're making. And that requires you to listen to your body 
and how it's reacting to different decisions. One thing that's um, one of the strategies, and it's actually a weekly intention um, early on in the program, is to eat more fruits and vegetables. And that's, you know, pretty basic as far as weight loss programs go. But the reason is different. The reason no way users eat more fruits and vegetables is because of the way it makes your belly feel. It's a completely different feeling than having having a sandwich, you know, versus eating your protein on a bed of lettuce. It it just it feels completely different. And if you can incorporate fruits and vegetables more into the meals and into you know have those for snacks instead of other foods then your body will become accustomed to it. It's like what we were saying earlier about exercise, that even if you don't start out pursuing the way exercise makes you feel, if you exercise and you can pause and reflect on how your body feels when you're done, it will become a very powerful reward for you. And that in the future, it may become the reason that you are exercising because you want that feeling. And um, the same is true with the fruits and vegetables, that your your body will very quickly want that feeling. And when you're feeling whatever your hunger cues are, if it's hungry or tired or distracted, whatever's telling you that it's time to eat, you're going to be seeking out that feeling um, rather than, you know, maybe more of a, yay, I get to eat now. <laughs> what can I... Uh... What can I enjoy on my taste buds? You know, what am I? And that those are the patterns, you know, if you're, if you're in the habit of doing that, then that's what you will do. And if you're beginning a new habit of eating more fruits and vegetables, you will just naturally continue on that habit. And that's one that will definitely maintain itself. So um, that's a, I mentioned weekly intention. That's a big part of the program. And it's something that is prescribed in the beginning and something that users take control of after they've acquired some behavior analytic information. And for that, there's interactive modules. They're really short and very interactive and very applied. And they cover things, many things that we talked about today, you know, cues and triggers, motivation, um, behavioral momentum. And it describes what they are and then applies them to this goal of weight loss that all the NOAA users share and um, provides also an opportunity to reflect on how you can leverage this new information and incorporate it into your daily life so that continuing down this path is is natural and um, you know with the more information you you acquire it becomes easier and then also at the end of the courses, every, it kind of, you get new functionality, you know, you, you complete a little, a little course. And then from there you might get whatever that course covered. So it might be some new strategies that you can use. It might be a new weekly intention. Um, it might be a new reflection question. And the reflection questions are a very big part of how this app allows people to change, you know, moves the barriers out of the way and allows people to change. And that's just, I like to think of it, you know, you're tucked into bed. That's, that's kind of like how I use it, but you certainly can just, doesn't have to be the very end of your day, but when your day is mostly done, you answer some questions and they're to support a positive mood. They're to um, support effective problem solving and looking at your day with that behavior analytic point of view. And um, they also um, work toward maintaining a good level of motivation. So they incorporate um, different applications of um, feeling connected to your goal and how you want to, how you want tomorrow to go. So that, that is also a big part of it. Yeah. And then with version two, which is coming out very soon, there'll be um, what I always wanted for the app, which is a ability to connect with others. And you'll be able to read what other no way users are saying and, and share things around a weekly question or around a um, reflection question that you want to share how you responded. And, um, 
And then having that opportunity to just feel, put your phone down and feel focused and feel a calm joyfulness and also motivated that you're connected with this goal for yourself. And all of a sudden it feels more attainable than it did um, five minutes ago before you did your reflections. Mm, Excellent. So can I just, I really, I really like all that surrounding concept about it, but just as a, you know, as a, someone who helps people with their nutrition and, and, and deal with their symptoms and improve their health. Um, is the like that aspect of the fruit and vegetables is that built into the app or can people put in their own their own needs in there can that be changed you know because there's lots of different styles of eating so is that sounded like that was built in or is that just we just using an example with that <laughs> it's it's built in to the extent that it's your um, your first, it's, it's an intention that everybody works on trying to eat more fruits and vegetables, but, um, it's not like a requirement of the program. And that's, that's the cool thing. And, and how the program's individualized. It's sometimes when we're starting something, we're like, okay, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. But that's not actually how change happens. And we were talking about this before that you have to be able to, a, know what information to attend to so that you can strengthen and adjust that path that you're on because it's going to be different for everyone based on your own preferences and tendencies. Um, but the the analytical skills are going to be the requirement. That's going to be the consistent thing across all users who are successfully engaging with the program and um, seeing the progress they want to see. And one of those um, in the very beginning of the app is called rule breaking. And rule breaking is two things. It requires that you are able to identify rules that you follow, recognize them as they're happening, or reflect on them later, whatever those rules are, and then do it differently. It's like a little experiment. Like it's not a commitment. There's no commitment. It's just, let me just have a new experience here. Okay. I usually get seconds. I usually eat three slices of pizza. Let me eat two in a salad and just have that experience. Just let myself do that. I want to know how I'm going to feel later. Am I going to regret not having the third piece? Am I, um, you know, going to be hungry later or will it satisfy me? And giving yourself the opportunity to have a new experience and see how it feels. And what that does is it, it unlocks your day that there's, if you are breaking rules, you're recognizing rules that you're following, you're doing it differently just to see how it feels, then you're no longer cornered by your own habits. There's no habit that can make you feel defeated and like you have to do it and that you're in, you know, automatic mindless mode all day. Everything is a new opportunity. Um, and it could be anything. It doesn't have to be food related. You know, um, one, one thing, um, like if you're having a bad day and someone asks you how your day is, how about you just talk about the positive things that happened? You know, you're, you're kind of feeling overwhelmed. You know why your day was bad. You don't really, um, you know, need to bring down other people. You know, maybe, maybe you need to have, you know, a nice therapeutic conversation with your loved one. That's something, but for the most part, if you can focus on something positive where you would have focused on something negative, then you're breaking your role. And it doesn't mean that you're changing who you are as a person or that you're going to continue to do it forever. It just means that you made that experience available for you. And now you can make future decisions based on that new experience. Yeah. Now, last time we spoke, you said you were going to try and get the app um available in New Zealand because at that time it wasn't available so have you managed to do that I believe so I wasn't able to verify it um just because I'm not in New Zealand but it was added 
at the beginning of the week. So I'm thinking it might be up by now. Right. Well, I was looking at your website this morning and I should, probably should have got my phone and clicked on the clicked on the little whatever you call it. <laughs> oh yeah, the QR code. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah code. If, you, um, if you do the QR code, it'll recognize if you're on an Android or Apple device and it'll take you to the respective store. Uh, or, or you can just search no way, W-E-I-G-H, two words. And um, it should pop right up for you. Mm, mm. Well, it's been really, it's been fascinating talking to you. Really interesting. Um, you've got so many insights. I'd, I'd actually love to have some more conversations with you in the future. Um, you too. Uh, I really yeah. feel like I am. Um, I learned something speaking with you, and, <laughs> and I, I love the, I love the celebrating. The celebrating yeah. is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might be able to pop that into your app. Yeah. In the future. That's right. Future, yeah. um, uh -huh. iteration of it. You might be able to explore that concept, um, you know, from a behavioral psychology point of view. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Valerie? Is there anything we haven't covered today that you'd like to talk about? Um, I just, I just like to say, because I know your listeners are, are focused on self-improvement and health. And I just, whenever possible, I just like to promote mental health and encourage people not to be too hard on themselves and to really accept that mental health has to come first. And if you want to do anything, you need you need that calmness and that peacefulness to support your decision making and um, allow you to see your path and, and where you want it to go. Mm. Fantastic. Well, that's a really lovely way to end. So thank you so much. And thank you, Susan. This was very fun. Yeah, it was.